Hello, Hectosage here on the Sage Channel. And recently I've been experimenting around with um, some large drills. Modded large drills by Mexpex. They're pretty damn awesome things. Full mod name is up on screen right there. Well, I just started deciding to build a big ship, and um, as I kept building on it, rather unfortunately, a big ship rather quickly became a kind of really big ship. Almost more of, well, a mega ship, frankly. Um, yeah, it's so large, actually, that the antenna I had at the back wasn't enough because I found one when I was at the front. I couldn't connect the antenna to open the doors to let myself in, so I've actually had to put two antennas on the thing. Yeah, it's a pretty hefty mining ship. As per usual with my ships, it's fully piped up and plumbed up. Inside it, I'll give you a tour soon and show you the fact that it has an assortment of refineries, assemblers, and a mountain of storage. That way, even if you're using this without a times multiplier inventory, you'll still have enough room to store quite a bit of stone as you actually attempt to get some proper ingots and stuff. Um, yeah, it's got a lot of storage. It's got storage for your raw ore that you're mining and stone, as well as storage for the ingots and everything once it's been processed. As well as, I believe it was four to six assemblers, all with an assortment of modifications to them as well, which I'll be showing you just uh, in a moment. I guess that's enough of me spinning about this slowly. You probably noticed the fact that it's got an assortment of large turrets on it as well. Those are modded turrets, or actually just relatively normal sized turrets, frankly. But they're modded as well. They're the same ones we've been using in the survival series. I'm going to go ahead now and just switch over to mouse and keyboard. That way I can control the camera with a little bit more accuracy, but uh, it's a bit jumpier, of course. These are those turrets I'm talking about. Fantastic mod. I stuck a lot of them on there, actually. It's not a warship, but it does have quite a few of those. Because, of course, if you get yourself in a spot of bother with, let's say, pirates, or even more notably, an asteroid bombardment, well, you're going to need some turrets or your ship's just going to get torn apart. Let's go ahead and actually start our tour. We'll start it up here at the front. As I said, these are a modded turret. There'll be a link in the description down below, and they are a fantastical thing. They're humongous. To give you a better sense of size, I'll go ahead and fly myself up to them. You can see there, they're five blocks by five blocks uh, from left to right, and then sticking out, they're quite huge as well. I think it's actually around six or seven, maybe more. I also have a few lights up here at the front of this thing, as well as some more modded weapons here. That way, if, let's say, there's meteorites coming at the front of the ship, it'll actually be able to hopefully target those with some sort of accuracy. As you can see, I do have quite a few drills, nine to be exact at the front, and then on the left and right side, I have three more. That way, it'll give this ship some more clearance. And then at the top and bottom, I have a singular another drill here. Also at the top and bottom I do have a large industrial thruster, one of mine, stuck in there to give it some up and down force. Moving on from that section we have the large thrusters here. I've got six on either side to give us some side movement and mixed with all the little tiny thrusters we're going to be flying past over there. Inside this hangar we have a, well I'll show you the inside after I do the outside tour first. Moving on from there, we have this bump out section here, which is mainly, if my memory serves, dedicated to storage of all the ore that's coming in from those things and all the excess stone. Moving on from there, we have our refinery area, which is stuck inside this large clumped out section here, as well as more storage running along it to store all the processed ores in ingots basically and then we come to main storage which is actually right about there as well and our assembler setup and then we have our living area here so this is where you see all these little windows and this is a very odd ship for me because it's not exactly symmetrical inside on some of these areas here whereas you'll come over to the other side you see we have different window setups here this is where we actually have our bridge right here and no you don't face out to the side you face forward into a wall there and you just basically navigate using cameras that i kind of forgot to show we're at the very front of the ship so i'll just fly all the way back to the front and we can start our main tour i believe you already noticed the doors that were at the back of the ship which is the main hangar 
There you go. There's one little camera there. And there is, of course, a camera at the bottom right there as well. You can see this little red dot. Anyway, let's go ahead and hover up to those doors over here. Unfortunately, I didn't put a button panel in here. I sort of decided for time's sake, let's not spend 300 years going ahead and poking around and adding more stuff. Here's its name, of course. Um, I kind of thought of Nidhogg and that big worm that eats you. I just decided let's take the last half of that and hog because it hogs up the whole world anyway. Let's go ahead and find the hangar door. Oh, no, it's... It's probably going to be front hanger. There we go. And you can see all the stuff that I have named. I've named pretty much absolutely everything on this ship. Uh, front hanger door right two. Let's open that one. There we go. And popping the door open, we can fly in there. You can see gravity field. We've just come into it. I've aligned the gravity field so only the interiors of the ship will have gravity. We can go ahead and close this button right here. To close this door, I have buttons set up for left and right door. This one's of course the one on the left. These doors also are a mod as well. Once again, I urge you to check the description down below to go ahead and get your hands on that mod as well. It's a very nice pack. As you can see, I had quite a few mods installed on this thing. S's airtight doors and stuff. The heavy mining drill, which I can't quite remember who made that. Uh, yeah, in here, let's go ahead and actually just open this up. It's got a button of its own. Da -da -da -da. I have an update available for Photoshop. How wonderful. Anyway. If we look in here, this is where all the ship's gyroscopes are stored as well as its ore sensors. And you see we have a sensor there and there and a few more facing every which direction except for backwards pretty much. That way, uh, well, I believe these scan in a circular range, but just in case they find themselves not functioning in that manner in the future, well, now they're set up to face and scan in pretty much every direction. Well, here's this large thruster that we're at the base of. That was one of mine. And there's another one there for the bottom of the ship. And, of course, just more piping and everything heading off in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead. And actually, there's one more thing to show right here. If I can still get down to it, I might have goofed myself up a little bit. Yeah, you can't really get down to it. There is a under section right there. So I have to really think that possibly maybe I'll do away with... Yeah, we can do away with it. We could do away with that one right there. And that one right here. There we go. And now we still have one in each direction. But we can access this access door down here pop this open and you'll also notice none of this is actually pressurized the doors are just sort of there for security reasons we now are under the hangar that we were just in a second ago where we have a nice walkway through here just so we can maintenance stuff if need be unfortunately you can't really get past all these gyroscopes and maintenance some of them at the front if things go wrong so i don't know what will happen if things really go wrong there let's go ahead and keep ourselves moving shall we i have a few drop off points here that way if you find yourself in need of just dropping off some equipment, you could just go ahead and drop it right in there and hopefully it'll take it to wherever it needs to be. Actually, it might just keep it there, but at least it's out of your inventory. Let's put it that way. Again, more buttons. You'll also notice a few seats scattered around here, just so that if people are working down here and the ship needs to make a jump or the people's people's people are low on energy, they'll be able to go ahead and sit down. Sh shall we do that again and open the door? This is a pretty amazing view, I think. See, not, see, now I'm ruining it. I'm letting you see it. I should have just... Okay, and so here comes the grand reveal of the main hall of this ship. Ta-da! Uh, yeah, it's, it's a hefty beast. It's a hefty beast. Got another chair to our left and right as well. And you can see some sorters going on up there because I do have a sorter system set up to only, well, to basically be pulling through all the ores right through that to push them into all these cargo containers that we see here. And actually, if we fly to the side, you should be able to see that we do have a few jump drives stuck back there as well. So the jump drives of this ship are stuck back there. Also above that, we do have another pipe coming up here and leading down to everything. That's because this pipe leads back to a pipe back into the pipes down there which leads back beneath the floor and below this we have another pipe which leads well basically all the way down and connects into everything that isn't sorted so if you put ore in any of the containers in the living area of the ship it'll automatically pull it through this sorter into the front of the ship again being refined on the way uh yeah it's a loop-de-loop -loop system basically let's go on and carry past all these cargo containers they do carry on below us by i believe one floor yeah you can see right here one of the gaps that opens up I do have a few blocks just holding everything together. If I actually fly through here too, you'll be able to see that we do have quite a few jump drives stuck in here. I believe... Yeah, we used to have a few more, but unfortunately they ended up getting removed as I upgraded the ship. But still, quite a few of them. And this is just on one side of the ship. You can see more piping stuck in right here. These are all for turrets. Once again, these are leading and connecting into the non-sorted area. 
uh, just because they're going to need to be pushing and pulling ammo. And you can see I had to loop this pipe around it, of course, because this is still connected to, I believe... Oh no, this is connected to the output of ingots, I believe. So let's just loop it through here, back up to here, and drop right there. There we go. And so we can keep following the pipes along into this area here, which is the refinery section. And I believe there should be a sorter somewhere in here. Ah, no, there isn't a sorter, because basically they can go ahead and pull their own resources in if they need them. That's why I didn't stick a sorter there. Otherwise, it kind of defeats the purpose of having so much storage right there if it's all just being forced into the refineries. Anyway, so the refineries all have mainly, all but one of their upgrade slots is to allow them to produce more ore. And then I believe that one right there at the very top, the very final upgrade slot on all of these is just to allow it to go a little bit faster, I believe. Or maybe it was power efficiency. No, it was faster, I believe. And you can see we have one refinery on top of another all the way down this whole pathway here. And that's on either side as well, so pretty hefty area. And you can see these are the thrusters that run on the top at the bottom, the smaller normal ones you probably glimpsed when I was flying by. Also, you can see that I had all these lights coming down from the ceiling. I wanted to carry that sort of pattern. Of course, I got to this point and I didn't have a big block to stick it down on. I just didn't feel like going ahead and deleting that and sticking one of these in there. So I went ahead and stuck some metal pieces just to the side here so I could stick a light on it. And it gave us roughly the same effect. And again, I have the dividing area here as it's going to be leading into another section. And this is basically where you can see another sorter up there, which is now taking out the ingots and pumping them into these big storage containers for our left and right. And once again, we have another piece of metal sticking out here so I can stick a light on it. And everything gets a bit quieter, well, not necessarily quieter, but a bit of a different sound over here as we move on from the, stuff, from the actual refinery machines. Now, it should be pointed out that, of course, that pipe pumped everything into there, yes? Well, I do have another pipe right here that's a bypass, basically. And this bypass that's going right down here actually eventually ends up leading to a, well, ejector port at the very back of the ship. Now, unfortunately, it throws a itsy bitsy bits of rock. But if I could find a way to get that to throw out huge clumps of rock, I could basically just have the ship mining all the stone, throwing the stone out the back and just keeping the ore, which would be very nice. Uh, anyway, I should also point out that the connection point there, which goes into both of these, you'll notice that these actually loop around and go all the way back behind all of the refineries. This is where I basically was earlier, but on the mirrored side. And you can see that that's why it was disconnected, because the ingots are supposed to be kept separate from everything else. It's not really a necessity, but I figured with it pumping stuff out, it should be kept separate. You'll also notice that up here we have a pipe leading out and leading in, which is designed to only allow ingots through. Wait, I'm not sure there's a purpose for this. <laughs> if only ingots are going into this. I shouldn't actually need to sorter here, should I? Let's just go ahead and check its it's, yeah, it's got nothing in it. Oh, yes, now I remember why I put it there. The idea was that maybe this would stop it from that, it would stop that sorter from forcing stuff into the assemblers if everything gets filled up. Who knows, maybe it will, maybe it won't. Anyway, you can see these are our assembler setups. We have a few things to conserve. I believe it is on energy. Uh, is that what the ones those were? I can never keep track of those damn things. They're so poorly named, I find. Efficiency. Effectiveness. Yeah, power efficiency, most definitely, because it's got power in it. So the, each of these assemblers have two power efficiency, and then two of the actual ones that allow them to work a bit faster, I believe it is. Let's just double check again. Well, it has to be, isn't it? Because you can't get the one to make more. Oh, productivity. I think I might have gotten them backwards on the refineries. Anyway, moving on, we're just going to leave it as it is now at this point. But you can see we got the ones to, uh, I believe it's make them work a bit faster. And we actually have two assemblers in each of these piles. We got one right there and one right there, followed by, of course, one right there and one right there. I can't believe you'll understand how they're put together. So we got a fair few of them. I could have lined them up at sort of a diagonal or something so there wouldn't be this big opening here, but I decided, you know what? Eight assemblers is more than enough, I think, for a ship that's not supposed to be mass-producing actual products. You'll also notice that I am surrounded by pipes again. And now there's two of these here. This is basically so that we don't end up with well, this is basically so if you need to disassemble something, you can hit a button and it'll switch this one, which I believe is set to only allow components through. Yep, components, ammo, hand tools. So it's only allowing that stuff out and it's actually pulling it out into main storage, which I actually have quite a few main storage containers, including two down below me and two above me. And basically it's that way, as soon as you produce something, it'll automatically be put into one of these huge containers here. So you'll actually be able to find it more easily. 
but I decided that if you need to disassemble something, we can of course go ahead and press this button. It switches that one off, so it's no longer pulling anything out, because of course if it was pulling and we were able to put stuff in, it would just be pulling stuff out of this and putting it back in that right away. And of course pulling from anywhere else it can get its grubby hands on. But So it shuts that one off, and now you can go ahead and manually shift stuff into the assembler if you like, and I believe this should be set to allow pretty much, yes, anything to go in. So you just manually click and drag anything into an assembler if you need to disassemble it. And of course I have this button right here just to switch that back and forth, which is triggering that timer block to be changing both of those as well as changing the lights. And I got a camera here that way if somebody up on the bridge is like, why isn't stuff working? They can check in on this area and see if something is happening. Another camera right there as well to check on this here. And this is so that if you decide that, hey, I need to drag a stack of iron ingots out of here and take it to my main inventory elsewhere, well, you can go ahead and press this button here. Once again, the lights shift, and now you can drag stuff in and out of the metal storage as freely as you like. The danger here is, of course, if the refineries are pumping out tons of excess metal, they could end up overflowing into your actual main storage, but I don't think you're going to have to worry about that too, too much. Let's go ahead. Once again, we've shut that off, and we can go ahead and go to the main living area. Here's our other gravity generator. I'm not sure I actually showed you the first one, but it was in that first hangar. And before we head into the living area, let's actually go up here to the very top. And here's that overflow pipe I was talking about. We're going to go through this access door right here, and it's going to lead us into a floor space between the living floors. This area is still depressurized, mind you. That's an airlock, by the way, um, an airlock O2 tank right here. And we can carry on, and you'll actually see that this is, like I just said, a maze of little tunnels beneath the floors, or in between the two floors. And this is to facilitate all the room's oxygen setup, basically. I had to crouch to get through there. But if we were to go ahead and follow that one snaking pipe that snakes its way all the way through, so this is that one pipe that doesn't actually connect with any of the other pipes on the ground, it leads up and through here. And as well does the oxygen pipe, but they're actually kept separate. Can I fit through here? I've gone the wrong way. I gotta go, I'm gonna go around to the other side of that. Um, oh dear. I, I, <laughs> is this my other way through? I thought I had another way through. Apparently I don't. Alrighty, there we go. I'm now on the other side of those pipes that I was looking at a second ago. So you can see they're both heading up in here and they lead up into here. So we got the one with the oxygen and that can also transfer all of our, any materials we like right here, looping up into this system, which hooks up to all the turrets at the back of the ship. And then we got this pipe here that came up from the other side, which is just that overflow pipe, which we can see goes around here, loops, making sure it doesn't connect to anything. It's not supposed to before it connects into this, which is a connector on the outer side, which is just designed to spit out. And that machine right here is designed to pull ore, or not ore, but stone, pardon, when it's turned on, so it should theoretically just be tossing as much as it can out. Let's go ahead and make our way back to... Where were we coming from? Can I fit through here? There we go. Ha! That wasn't the best shortcut ever, was it? <laughs> it was not a shortcut at all, actually. But we can go back to here. Here's that aero tank, O2 tank I pointed out. We can now go ahead and fly down here. And what this is going to do is take us beneath the living section. And you can actually see down here that we have an assortment of... Why is there a gap here? That's terrifying. Didn't see that. But you can see we have an assortment of O2 tanks right here, so this ship can hold quite a bit of air. As well as you might have noticed as soon as we flew down, we had actually landed on top of all of these oxygen generators. So we can actually generate a humongous amount of O2. And you even see that the pipe here is coming down and plugging straight into that. Because of the way they're hooked up, it'll easily be able to flow, or it should be able to flow oxygen back and forth between all of them. Should be. Unless I've botched something terribly. No, there's a connector at the bottom over here. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, is there a line like that, the connection? Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, so they're all hooked up, so oxygen and every any supplies can flow through all that, then up this tube into here. Doo -doo -doo. And then that, that one, of course, leads from that one to that one. Basically, it's all hooked up. You can take my word for it. I've gone through and made sure everything is hooked up as it needs to be, and even have a pipe coming back out of there, which leads down to the turrets on the bottom of the ship, which are a mirror image, of course, of the ones at the top, except for we don't have the uh, ejector port there. We do have a connection port here, but it's the one that you'll be able to pull anything from. Let's go ahead and fly back this way now, and we can fly back through this door. Uh, you might notice the pipe directly above me. That was that anything goes pipe that I showed you wave at the beginning of the ship. 
that I said basically completes the loopy loop system. That's this one right here. Leads into our main storage and back out of our main storage and then goes all the way down the full length of the ship pretty much. Well, actually, I think completely. Yeah. Yep, all the way down into that first hangar. Oh, I can't actually get up from here, can I? I don't really get an access door. Oopsie daisy doozy. Oh dear, I'm bumping into things. You might have noticed some piping down below me as well. That was, of course, more piping for more turrets down there. Let's go ahead and get ourselves back up here. We can actually go into the living area now. Boop. And we want to depressurize this room. There we go. Come on. Boop. There we go. Orange to know it's depressurizing. I don't actually have a light to confirm it, but it takes only a millisecond. And then, of course, we can uh, exterior door, open that up and get inside there. You can, of course, press this button here, but I'm not going to do that. Close that door again. Once it's closed, I'll once again pressurize the room. I have to say I'm loving all the different mods that I've chosen for this because, let's, let's admit it, S makes some great crap. Look at that stuff. He's made a bunch of these. And at first I was confused as why they're pink, but they're pink because it's just saying you can recolor the ones that are pink. Of course, I like gray. Uh, let's go ahead and pressurize this room. Press the button. Only takes like half a second. There we go. And we can open the door. And we're now inside the living area. We can even go ahead and take our helmet off, which caused our game to flicker for a second. Scary. And we can, of course, once again, it's a good procedure to close that door, uh, interior door. I, of course, have the button on all these so you can open the other door if need be. That way, if somebody did forget to close the door, you can go ahead and close it. Ah, all right, well, we're in the main living area hall now. Directly above us is the air vent for this room. All the air vents in the living area are set up to close all the doors in that area if there is a depressurization. So let's say this room where we're in right now is depressurized. That big door right there would close. That big door right there would close. That door would close if it was open. That door would close. Same with that one. You get the drift of it. It'll seal itself down. Absolutely every room here is set up like that. Let's start right here in the bridge. And the bridge, as you already believe, I believe saw through a window, that's the main cockpit right down there. If we were actually to go ahead and hop in it, you'll see that we have our drill normal. So we can just hold left click to drill or right click to just destroy. Press 2 to turn those drills on. 3 to access the top camera. 4 to access the bottom camera. Those are the two cameras that we have at the front. 5 to turn on and off the lights at the front. We can do a shift 2 to switch to our jump drives where we can reduce or increase the jump distance. And I've actually partition the jump drives by every 15 or so. So number one is the first jump drive in the list. Number two is the about 15th in the list. And then number five is the very last one in the list. That way, if you're jumping minimal distances by, you know, setting it such as this, it might not use up all your jump drives. So you'll be able to trigger one of the ones that hopefully hasn't been spent yet and keep jumping different distances. Anyway, let's go ahead and look into here. By the way, the reason I have other seats is because if you have a crew using remote control ships, they will be able to easily sit here and use them. I also have button panels here. I was originally going to have button panels to access those cameras I was showing you inside the ship. Unfortunately, that feature no longer seems to work. I could have sworn originally you could click a button and access a camera from the button, but that no longer seems to function. So unfortunately, I ended up just leaving all of these blank because otherwise you'd be a bit like, well, I don't know if it's on or off. This is the captain's quarters directly off of the bridge. He even has his own nice little window and his vent. Once again, the vent does toggle to close that door if this room is depressurized. And moving on from the captain's quarters with his little desk and bed, we can go ahead and move into his personal office. So that's his personal desk and now his personal office desk where people can meet him and talk to him if need be. And it's right here, once again, has its own vent, because every room should have its own vent set up. And you can see he even has a window to watch his crew walk about her. Well, I don't know. It's a captain. He might want to talk to his crew through the window at some point. Maybe he has a loudspeaker. Here's a double door. You might be wondering why I have a double door here and then this door. Actually, you're probably not, but it's obvious. If either of these areas are depressurized, you don't want to have to depressurize the room that is pressurized to go between them. So that's why you'll see some double doors every now and again. Moving on from here, back to the main hallway. I should explain those are the doors that lead to the big, large hangar at the back of the ship. We'll go to that last probably. This is the medical area. Moving into here, you can see we have an assortment of beds. It's not the nicest place on the ship. I'm not going to lie. I'm not the happiest with it, but a room was not exactly plentiful on this ship when I was got to this point because, of course, it needs to all fit within the hole of the drills, so I couldn't extend this out too far. But we do have a few desks for doctors, for patients, and a respawn station right here. Moving on from that, 
And of course, it's got its double doors as well. And of course, I feel like I have to point it out. I'm sorry. It does have a vent at the top as well. Moving on from those rooms, we have our stairwell. And our stairwell, first of all, leads down. And we can lead all the way to here. And you can see the room with all of our reactors down there that we were floating around before. Got two doors here. That way you can go out there without depressurizing the entire ship. Or at least the stairwell, because the stairwell has its own vent, which will close all the doors related to the other rooms. And if we head up, you'll notice that we have a few windows, a few lights, and as we carry up farther, you'll find the vent that controls the stairwell. Heading all the way up, it is quite the walk, because remember we have that large gap between floors. We reach the top living area floor where all the bedrooms are for the rest of the crew. This is the mess hall, not exactly the most extravagant mess hall ever. I guess I should either invest in making my own mods or just find some really nice mods because there are quite a few out there on Steam Workshop to make my mess halls slightly nicer than this. It's got its vent below the floor. You'll notice that all the vents on the second floor here are all below the floor. This was a space saver thing because as you can see, the uh, vacuum of space is merely one block away above us. So it wasn't really room the vent in the vents at the ceiling and I didn't want to spread out the ship to put the vents in between the walls so this was the only real option I had it felt. I could have of course lowered this floor down to be exactly on top of the previous one but of course that would just be above its pipes and then I'd have to squeeze pipes in. There just really wasn't room for all that so beneath the floor they went. Well let's actually go ahead and head back here because we're going to end up going on a loop anyway. We have a double airlock here, just in case, of course, the stairwell is pressure depressurized, or that area is. We head into this, we come to Hallway 1. Hallway 1 has an assortment of rooms that are all like this. Vent in the floor, bed, desk, window, ceiling. Yeah, you probably saw them from the outside. I can actually go ahead and show you where they were if you're getting at all confused. There's the stairwell there. There's me at the window. Da -da -da -da. Yarp. And let's go ahead and keep on moving. As I said, oh no, no, I didn't mean to do it like... <laughs> Dagnabbit. I didn't uh, mean to do that. As I said, all these rooms are pretty much exactly the same. Actually, frankly, all the rooms right here are going to be absolutely exactly the same. You'll notice that there's no rooms on the right here. That's because as we go down the next corridor right here, and by the way, a lot of these rooms are left open because, of course, if there's a depressurization anywhere, they'll automatically close themselves off. So I didn't feel like I needed to leave all the hallways sealed off or else you'd be opening and closing doors all the time. This hallway here has four more rooms on it which are slightly different. Unfortunately, you don't get a, the nicest view, but you do get a view looking up out there. Bit of a strain on your neck if you're sitting here to have to look up straight like that, but um, well, you can always move your desk around, I assume, you know, as soon as you unweld it from the floor. <laughs> oh dear. Anyway, that's the gist of these four rooms here. They all have skylights instead of just standard windows, and their light is on the wall instead of the ceiling vent still on the floor, though. Let's go ahead and carry on down this hall into the last one here. Don't really have to show you these rooms. They're pretty much the mirror image of the ones that we saw on the other side. You'll notice an orange light every now and again. That's just because we have the running lights on the exterior of the ship. No alarms or anything going off. Okay, well, let's head down to the end of this hallway. And you'll notice that this leads us back to the mess hall. Like I said, big loop. It's a pretty hefty thing. It's, I'm, I'm really proud of it because it took forever to name all these rooms or name all these vents and name the doors and make the groups to hold the different doors. That way, as soon as the vent triggers, it'll close multiple doors at once. And oh boy, oh boy, it took a long time to get all this set up, but I am pretty proud of it. Oh, and when I say it took a long time, I mean, like, yeah, a long, a long time. Whew. Okay, well. I think the only room left to show would be this room right here. This is the large cargo bay I mentioned earlier. We have the outer door button here just in case anybody forgot to close doors. We got those, but luckily they didn't. I should probably go ahead and put one of these outer con door control buttons on the exterior as well. Uh, that would be smart, wouldn't it? And the reason I have two doors, by the way, right here, Jesus, I could have depressurized the whole thing if I wasn't cautious. That was dangerous. Um, the reason I have two doors, as in two doors here and two doors here, two passageways, there's a better way of saying it, is that way if somebody needs to be coming and going at the same time, or roughly the same time, they don't have to get in there, okay, I'll wait for you to go in and then I'll go out, okay, no silly nonsense like that. Yeah, I really should put a control panel right there and set those doors up. Anyway, this is the main cargo bay, not cargo bay, silly sage, the main hangar. I do have a light here, so we can shut that off and press our light button and then... 
I remember spotlights in the past would illuminate more than just a foot in front of them. Unfortunately, they seem to have changed recently. They have changed, also it would appear the lighting inside, because in the past, obviously, this would be pretty black. It would go, like, pitch black. They seem to have changed the lighting now, that so things get overblown whenever you're in dark looking at light and vice versa. Not the way they used to have it. It would appear they've switched that finally. Anyway, there's the hangar lights, as I showed you. I can open all these doors. This room never pressurizes, as a lot of the ship does. It stays depressurized, so we can open up all these huge hangar doors. I should say with this mod, the doors don't have a special pocket that's part of the mod. It just goes into whatever blocks you have there and doesn't damage them. So you have to build basically a solid block section to hold that. Alrighty, well, that is the interior of this ship. I think I've gone over all of it. I got the antenna at the back. I got an auxiliary antenna here at the front. I don't believe I showed you, but it was stuck up there in one of the crawl spaces and auxiliary front antenna as well as just the front antenna. Here is that drop-off port that I showed you from the inside, and down below we have the drop-off port, well, the access port for whatever you want to access. That's this ship. Oh, and more industrial thrusters. Everything's piped up. It took me an insanely, just an insane amount of time to pipe it up. You see some stuff like that where you can actually see the conveyor sticking out, because I had to stick it in such a silly spot with so it wouldn't interfere with other things. The jump drives are stuck behind, I think it was that panel or that panel, I think it's that one actually. It's just, it's a surprisingly really compact thing for something that's, well, well over 200 blocks long. Well, 200 meters long, sorry. Uh, whew, well, would you like to see it eat something? Would you like to see it eat something really quick? You can go back to the bridge. You can go back to the bridge really quick and we'll see it eat a little bit of stone, shall we? Unfortunately, I don't believe asteroids you spawn in are actually spawning in with meteorite chunks, by the way. Oh, camera. Yeah, by the way, camera. With actual ore in them. So what you get right now is just stone. I'll actually have to have to jump us off to a actual normally spawned asteroid to get some of that, unfortunately. Some of that ore. Let's go ahead, get there, and at least eat up one of these standard asteroids to show you that. <coughs> there we go. And hop in here. And... Convert to ship, because I don't believe I've actually done that yet. There we go. The hog is now free to gobble away. And we can rotate a little bit. And let's start flying. Let's stop ourselves at, I believe the ideal speed I found for using this was about 0.8 meters per second. Shockingly slow, frankly. But the thing is, I found that if you're going too fast, you're actually going to get yourself in a spot of bother where your drills, even though they're these humongous things that take thousands and thousands, tens of thousands, of plates and other components, you'll find yourself in a spot of bother with them shearing off. So let's slow ourselves down to about 0.8. We can go ahead and see now that, in fact, we'll use spectator for it, shall we? We are just destroying this little asteroid right here. I mean, it's just melting. Of course, we could go ahead and do an F9 so we have control of the ship. We'll stop the ship really quickly, turn the drills off, and right click. <laughs> Nothing. It just annihilates. It, it's an isle. It's a monster. It's a monster. It's an absolute monster. I mean, look at it. It's terrifying. Let's actually turn those back on. Take control over it once again. And just gobble this up really quickly, shall we? Shall we just do that? Uh, F9. That's why I have control. Turn those drills on. Slow ourselves down. We're actually not going in a straight line. That's very bad. The ship is actually so long that the reason I have to go at point eight also is if you turn at all or the drills snag at all and don't break, It'll also just turn the ship somewhat, which is very bad with a ship this long, because if the ship turns at all, you can see there isn't much clearance. There's basically clearance for like one block if you're going through a big asteroid. So you'll find yourself, well, without a ship or with huge holes. I had the entire sir, entire living quarters depressurize at one point, which is a nightmare. I, it was terrible. Just because there was a small bit of rock sticking down on the ceiling and the ship had turned because one of the drills didn't drill through a piece quick enough and it just went right to the ceiling. So yeah, you can see they gobble it away. If we were to go ahead and check the refineries, you can see that the refineries are gobbling up with all the nonsensical stone and turning it into gravel, which is then going into all those storage containers. Oh, also, by the way, I do have a bunch of oxygen tanks I put on this ship, as well as, if I was to go ahead and check, reactors. I put 200 uranium in each of the reactors and all of the 
or the 23 millimeter turrets yes i put 100 ammo in there as well as the front turret so everything is also survival ready if you go ahead and download this ship you can expect to be using it in survival that very minute mind you it's a big ship i don't know how your computers will handle it check it out and find out Anyway, guys, that's it for this ship. I'm going to go ahead and put another video out with me mining through some larger asteroids. And also with, uh, well, meteorite showers turned on so you can see the hailstorm of gunfire coming. But I figure this has been a 35-minute video tour or so of this ship. I've missed doing this. I'm not going to kid you guys. I have seriously missed building a big ship and just going over every little detail of it. Um... Yeah, if you like this, go ahead and give me a like. If you disliked it, I'm sorry. Um, consider sharing it with a friend. Consider downloading and using this ship yourself, tearing it apart, rebuilding it, whatever. It'll be up on the Steam Workshop for your pleasure to poke around with it to your heart's content. Anyway, guys, that is it. Thank you a bunch for watching, and I shall see you guys and girls next time. Ta-ta.